Screen Company, and then he worked on the main stage, and then we were roommates in New York. I, I was, I think, working at Sesame Street, and he was basically starting the alternative comedy movement at a place we both worked at and loved called the West Bank Cafe, run by Louis Black. Anyway, I'm gonna, Rick is gonna do a piece, and then we're gonna talk. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Rick Thomas. <laughs> song is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. <laughs> Just ask. <laughs> I have a lot of uh, ambivalence about performing. I love performing. But the reason why I love performing is because I want to express myself. But I also want to please an audience. And a lot of times those two things don't go together. I'm, I'm kind of like uh, Steve Bannon at a soul food restaurant. Uh, you know he wants to eat, but he doesn't want black people touching the utensils. <laughs> you know, uh, you should really change your attitude. You should want to listen to me. I know a lot of things that you don't know. As a matter of fact, it's great to be here at I.O., the home of the long form, used to be the home of the bottomless cup of coffee, but it's the home of the long form improv. I, I, I devised my own long form improv. You can only do it with a team, and the team cannot be any smaller than 34 people. And uh, it's, called, uh, it's called Sheep in the Meadow. And you start out, and, and it, it goes, uh, it runs the, the form, it's a, it's a, it's a four-hour form. Uh, and it starts out, there's about like 45 minutes of people just walking around in the space and looking for something that's not there. And then, and then there's a quick series of 17 two-person scenes. Everybody has to do it. And, and, in, and in every scene, in every scene, each player has to use the word fuck as a different part of speech. <laughs> so, you know, an, an adverb is fuck, you know. It's like, I engage the audience fuckily. That, that's a hard <laughs> thing. As is, as is a preposition, you know, where's the file? Fuck the cabinet. You know what I mean? I mean, it's hard. <laughs> but anyway, you should really, you also should listen to me out of some sort of kindness because my wife is here Paula, oh, I'm pointing to this guy. Paula, no, Paula, she's behind the iPad. She, this isn't just for the show. She does this everywhere. She doesn't trust me at all. I, I, my life is being video. Fuck the Truman Show, which is a reference to like 1922. The, the, uh, uh, but you know, we're, we're in a very romantic and, and really just an exciting, a whirlwind part of our relationship. We're struggling and we're old. So, you know, uh, when we, but this is what we're really gonna love when we look, would look back at it, except when it comes time to look back at it, uh, we're gonna be dead. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I, my assumption is, you know, I, I, like uh, Michael said, I was in seconds, play at the top of your intelligence and really respect the audience. I have no respect for the audience whatsoever. I mean, I really, for example, these are the things that you should just listen. Whether it entertains you or not, you should listen. And this is for the young women out there. I saw the, the big sign for DSW, and it says a woman belongs in the house, and also the Senate. You know, I want to just inform you of something. DSW does not give a shit about you or your future, okay? <laughs> I just want to tell you, they're trying to sell you something. I know that's a surprise to you. They're, whatever they sell, DSW, what, motor oil, whatever. <laughs> now because this is this is the piece that I'm going to do tonight because I have no respect for your intelligence I'm going to tell you jokes but I'm going to explain them to you so I'm going to explain the jokes because I know you're not going to get them and it'll be your fault it's not my fault you know I'll tell you I'll tell you what I think of the world 
My mother's 94 years old. I went to a Dunkin' Donuts. She, I, if I go see her in the morning on a Saturday or a Sunday, I bring her a jelly donut. If I go in the afternoon, I bring her a cheeseburger. So I went to a Dunkin' Donuts in Chicago, and I got the, I didn't look in the back. She's out in Batavia, Illinois. I drove about 30 miles. I happened to look in the back, and it was a chocolate donut. Now, you know, a friend of mine was talking to me about whether we could compete with China economically. We can't even get the right fucking donut in the fucking donut bin. I think that's a metaphor for America right now. That's why we have uh, the piece of shit that's in the White House, and there's no irony or humor in that. Okay. Here's, here's the first joke. Let's see how you do. Let's see how you do. You don't judge me. I judge you. Dear world, please don't come here. If you are already here, leave. But don't worry. If someone kills you, we will bomb them. Your friend, America. See, that's a reference to what Trump did last week with the Tomahawk missiles. See, you know, stay involved. Stay involved, okay? I know, it just wasn't funny. But anyway, I'm, I'm watching you. Here's another one. Trump just said, I've gotten to know the White House, a very special place. Many long hours of work here. I want to see his time card. <laughs> Guess I don't have to explain that. One. <laughs> the last time Washington was so fixated on unmasking and leaking, former Republican Senator Larry Craig propositioned the Lone Ranger in the bathroom at a costume party. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, you, know, you might know who Larry Craig is, you might not. It doesn't matter. He's some hypocritical Republican fucking asshole that wore the Bible on his sleeve for 30 years while he was diddling little boys or something. <laughs> okay. Here's a, here's a tip for those of you with small children. Anybody here have uh, grandchildren? <laughs> the uh, tip for those of you with small children, you know, Crayola discontinued, what was the name of that crayon? It was the dandelion crayon. They discontinued the dandelion crayon, which was a mixture of yellow and orange. So here's what you do with your kids. You tell them just to take just a yellow crayon and an orange crayon and go to the same spot that they're coloring on the face of Donald Trump when they draw some disrespectful and offensive picture of him. That's a little tip for those of you with kids. You know what the point of that joke was? Can anybody tell me? Can anybody tell me what the point? You see, generally, we teach kids to respect the president, right, when they're little? But this fucking asshole, fuck him. I'd like to see a four-year-old like say, oh, you fucking jerk. <laughs> How we do? So that's it. That's it. I've been great. You're so so. Thank you. Yeah, you fucking try. <laughs> so um, I was just to elaborate quickly on uh, so the West Bank Cafe. I, my personal feeling is you created the alternative comedy movement. I sat and wa I would work all day making Grover funny, and then I would go and see you perform at the West Bank Cafe. And I really, honestly, I think Odin Kirk borrowed what you had created and took it to New York to the Uncabaret. So you, uh, if you got residuals, you would have a huge shit fuck bunch of money. <laughs> shit fuck bunch of money is probably a billion. <laughs> That's right. You know, I told Michael backstage he was the perfect person to introduce me because he's probably the only person in the world that doesn't have to ask who the hell I am. <laughs> the, uh, so, uh, among other things, uh, 
What did you, you went to Notre Dame? I did. You created what annual show? The Keenan Review. Which is still going on. They still do that, yes. And you were the, in, you instigated it? It was my idea that me and this other guy organized it, and, and they've been doing it for 40 years. Uh, probably one of the most successful Second City shows, John Pulsart and Ringo. Is that the one you took to New York? No, uh, Orwell that ends well. Orwell that ends well. Uh, went to the Village Gate. Rick was also in Heartburn, directed by Mike Nichols. Uh, and an amazing monologist. I'm trying to get something started here. Um, so, uh, what else? And around town, what are you doing? Well, uh, first of all, I have a blog. It's called The Rick Blog. Uh, Richard Stephen Thomas, WordPress.com. Read The Rick Blog. Because you really should. You are in light. They are in light. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear my insights on the world. I, uh, I recently did a show over at Second City, and now this is this is boring because it's. But uh, I'm going to be doing a every second Saturday at 10 p.m. at the Comedy Shrine out in Aurora. I'm doing a show. I'm going to be doing a show at the Macaw uh, Theater in Evanston. Uh, I'm going out uh, to. Uh, LA. Uh, as a matter of fact, Paul's going to fly out. We're going to drive back together. So if anybody wants to drive with me in the car, <laughs> that's a wonderful drive. <laughs> especially, especially, especially with me behind the wheel, you know. I used to do it. Uh, I would go to Chicago to Tulsa, 15 hours. Tulsa to Albuquerque, 15 hours. Albuquerque to Santa Monica. Of course, when you do a run like that, you cannot talk to waitresses. You can't speak, you can't interact with human beings because all you're doing is vibrating at that <laughs> level. So that's why truck drivers vote for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so if I take this trip, maybe by the time I get there, I'm going to do a pro Trump show. I would just not recommend a 15 hour show. Yeah, no, no, I'll, are you kidding? An hour at a time. Um, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to return to the show. I'm going to break it.